If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Psalm 119. We'll be reading from verse 9 to 16. And, you know, one of the things when we read the Word of God, alam mo, actually, kung babasahin ko lang to, I'm sure the Lord can speak to you. And uh, my prayer is that as I read this passage, that we would allow the Spirit of God just to speak to us and allow His Word to really just permeate and penetrate our hearts today. Psalm 119, verses 9 to 16. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare all the rules of your mouth. In the way of your testimonies, I delight as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. This is the preaching of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for just your word that continues to speak to us even today, 2022. Thank you that your word is alive, it's active, it speaks to our situations today. And so Lord, I pray that you would allow your word to touch our hearts and minds and to not just remain in our hearts, but to be seen and reflected in our actions in our day-to-day living. Bless the preaching of your word in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, in, in China, by the year 2030, Eight years from now, China will have the biggest, the largest Christian population in the whole world. And about, maybe about 50, 60 million Christians are in church-sanctioned, state-sanctioned churches. It means that the simbahan that the government recognizes, they allow them, okay, we know that you know, as much as we would want to stop you, sige, you can worship your God, but here, according to these uh, statutes okay, or, 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 or laws that we are going to give you. But there are millions more that are in underground uh, house churches. Kumbaga, ibig sabihin, hindi sila recognized by the government. Okay? Or they're what you call illegal churches. And, uh, a couple of years ago, I, my family and I, we went on a ministry trip to one of our churches in China. And uh, just before we got there, I think a week before we got there, uh, ano sila, hindi sila church, uh, government sanctioned. Underground sila. Actually, hindi sila underground. Matapang sila eh. Okay? Nag-church sila sa isang sa hotel at yung isa sa isang uh, commercial uh, space Okay, in commercial space, guy. The week before, there was word that there's a church going on, so they had to stop for about two, three weeks until it died down. Uh-huh. And I even asked the pastor there, "Sabi ko, wait a minute. You're holding your Sunday service here in the hotel. Hindi ba this is public? Aren't you worried that you know?" They said, right, "It doesn't matter. Money is money." Okay, for them, I guess, you know, the hotel, so they're being paid, okay lang sa kanila. Okay, they're not going to report them, and uh, they're still meeting there, and actually they're going to expand nga eh. Anyway, ganun yung mga churches sa China. And uh, earlier this year, there was, uh, you know, the, the Chinese authorities even tightened their control on religion. Where the, we, if you're familiar with the app WeChat, okay, where they do all their online life on WeChat, they implemented new regulations to clamp down on churches that use this app. Okay? Uh, the yung church natin says China, every day, every morning, I think 6 or 7 a.m., mag-ano sila, bubuksan nila yung WeChat nila, yung, church, yung, yung head pastor nila would uh, 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 start preaching. Okay? And and they would just put on loudspeakers, so they would gather in their room, make loudspeakers sila, and they would hear the preaching of the word every morning. Uh, imagine that, 6, 7 a.m., they would wake up and just do that, about 30 minutes to an hour, 
every morning they would do that. And now they're clamping down on this app, uh, WeChat. They're banning the word Christ. Uh, just earlier this March. And if you type the word Christ, ito yung lalabas sa WeChat mo. Okay, it translates, the word Christ you are trying to publish violates regulations on internet information services including but not limited to the following categories. Imagine, the group Christ with pornography, gambling, and drug abuse. Okay, an excessive marketing or incitement. Okay, this is the message that will ha pop up in your WeChat. Kung magte-text kayo or if you would mention the word Christ. And um, before the pandemic, there's a story of a, a, an American pastor, Pastor Wayne Cordero from Hawaii, went to China, the, the rural, rural area. Tapos nagmeet siya ng mga church leaders. Okay? And these church leaders are from the underground church. Okay? Um, there were about 22. Uh, church leaders uh, who uh, rode a train, 13-hour train, just to go to the hotel room, a small hotel room where they would meet and do their training. Okay? 22. And so the pastor had with him 15 Bibles and he gave it out to all the leaders who were present. So kung 22 sila, pero 15 lang yung dinala niya, 7 didn't have a Bible. So sabi niya sa kanila, okay, uh, let's turn to uh, 2 Peter and we'll read the chapter there, verse chapter 1. Tapos napansin niya, may isang babae, she, ha she, was holding, she was given one of the Bibles and she gave it to the person next to her na walang Bible. But how while they were reading it, this church leader, this lady, was able to recite the whole of that chapter. So the pastor, the pastor said, napansin niya, parang sabi niya, Oh, ito, ah. So uh, during the break, he approached her and he asked her, I, I noticed that you were able to recite the whole chapter from memory. Sabi yung babae, alam mo, when you're in prison, you have time. When Christians would get captured because of their faith, because of their religion, they would actually spend up to three years uh, in prison. So, I mean, in prison, you have much time in prison. And what they would do, because they're not allowed to have any Bibles, any kind of religion, paraphernalia, may mga tao who would bring in passages of scripture in pieces of paper. They would sneak it in. Uh, when they would meet, yung mga, yung mga guests, di ba? yung mga friends nila who would visit them in prison, they would pass them I know, pieces of paper with passages, with verses on them. Uh, and she explained that she would memorize it really fast. Because if it gets confiscated, you know, wala na. Uh -huh. And so when they would get those pieces of paper, those verses, she would look at it, she would read it, she would memorize it by heart. And she said this, the guards can take away the paper, but they can't take away what's inside our hearts. What is inside your heart today? Is the word of God hidden, stored up, treasured in our hearts? We have the privilege of having our own Bibles. We can have an app with Bible after, we have, can have all the different Bible apps, all right? But is it something that is stored in our hearts? Are we hidden God's word in our hearts? And as we go through this passage in Psalm 119, my prayer is that our love and passion for the word of God would be rekindled, okay? We would have a hunger and desire to store up God's truth, his word, in our hearts. Starting with verse 9 in Psalm 119. How can a young man keep his way pure? By guarding it according to your word. I want to zero in on the word young. Okay? Maybe you na hindi naman ako young, so this doesn't apply to me. Okay? This is applicable to all of us. Lahat naman po tayo young, tama ba? Okay, yes. Come on, Pastor Larry. Okay, kahit turning 50 next year. Still very young. How can a young man keep his way pure? The idea here is that when one builds a habit, as young as they are now, okay, at a young age, you know, they build a habit of saying no to temptation, of identifying the triggers that would lead them into sin, okay, they be, then those experiences would lead them to have a 
a, a stronger conviction uh, to be able to resist the temptation when they're older. Okay? Diba? Experiences shape our habits. So if you have all of these experiences of saying no to sin and temptation at a young age, then when you're older, when you come face to face with that sin and temptation, you'll be like, well, I am. Not necessarily in that manner, but at least you are more uh, uh, able to say no because you have experienced overcoming those sins and temptations. You've, uh, you've experienced those small victories of saying no to the lure of the enemy. Again, experience has the power to shape our habits. My wife and I, when our kids were very young, we made a decision to intentionally not allow them to have any gadgets. Okay? And so, syempre, we had to replace their longing for to do something. So what we did was we would give them books. Okay? So at a young age, even if they could not read, two years old, one year old, we would put books in front of them. Well, starting off with coloring book, okay? and then story books that they would pass on to myself or to my wife to read it to them until they eventually learned how to read. And because we were intentional in building this habit in their life at a very young age, ngayon, pagpupunta kami sa mga mall, sasabihin nila, can we go to fully book? Kahit wala kaming pera, okay lang, sige, let's go. You browse and read all the books that you can. That's hindi pa naka-plastic. Okay, go, read all of it. Okay, and, and they, they have this love for reading, which they got from my wife. Okay, not me. I read from time to time. Okay, but this habit was something that was instilled to them at a very young age. In a similar manner, when you have experiences of resisting temptation and not entertaining sin, when you get older, you become more resistant to what the enemy would throw at us, all the temptations, the lies, the sin. But how can we have these string of experiences? Okay, baka sasabihin mo, hindi na ako young. Okay? But what can we do in order for us to not give in and to say no to the sin in our lives? It says there, by guarding it according to your word. In guarding sa NLT, it says to obey. NIV says to live it out. The KJV says to take heed. I like this, to taking, taking heed. Ibig sabihin, to pay attention. Minsan kasi binabasa natin yung Bible, ah, okay, gets ko na. But did you take heed? Did you really pay attention and really try to understand the context and what the Word of God is trying to say? Or do we assume na gets natin? But we need to take heed, to guard ourselves according to the Word of God. Take, for example, this verse in 1 Corinthians 6, 18. What does it say there? Flee. Flee from what? From sexual immorality. Now again, when it says there, how can a young man keep his way pure? Again, it's not just in the context of sexual immorality. Anything that leads to sin, anything that goes against the word of God, that, that, is, a, uh, uh, that is a sin against a God, falls under impurity. Okay? But... For, for this example, I'm going to use this verse, 1 Corinthians 6, 18, flee from sexual immorality. And when we read this, ano minsan yung mga application natin dito? Flee. Ah, ginagaw ko naman yun eh. Flee. I'm walking away. I'm saying no to sin. But if you guard against the word and you read and you take heed and you pay attention, obey it and live it out, flee. What does flee look like? It's like this. That's what. That's the difference. Hello. Flee isn't like by sin. You flee from it. Hello. Are we reading the same Bible? If you read the story of Joseph, no pamasuk si Mrs. Potiphar. What did he do? Hi, Mrs. Potiphar. What can I do for you today? Alam nanya. He fled. He ran away as far as he could. He paid attention. He obeyed. He lived out the truth of God's word. It means tayo, alam ka na yan. Kaya ko yan. Resist, flee from sexual temptation. Wala yan. Until we actually do give in. Because we have not heeded, we have not obeyed, we have not lived it out. Hello? Are we paying attention? Are we guarding ourselves 
according to the Word of God, according to what was written in the Word of God, or, we, or kung kaniyang inasum natin. This is what the Word of God says. Pay attention. Pagod na. But here's the thing. Make no mistake. The goal isn't to not sin. Minsan kasi binabasa natin, stay pure, live holy. We feel, I need to be perfect. I cannot do no wrong. But that's not the goal. The goal is to live a life that honors and glorifies God. When you're focused on that, Lord, let me live a life that pleases you. Let me live a life that glorifies you, that honors you. Lahat yan would fail in comparison to your love and desire and devotion to the Lord. Because that's the goal. The goal isn't to just say, no. No, Satan. No, sin. Not today. That's not the goal. The goal is, yes, Lord, I will follow you. I will love you. I will pursue you. I will be devoted to you. See the difference. Sometimes we're not focused eh. We're so focused on Lord, okay ako today, Lord. I did not fall into sin. Pure ako today. Holy ako today. Anak, hindi yun yung point. Ako, where am I in that? Have you followed me? Have you pursued me? Have you read my word today? And that's how we can guard our hearts as we live out the word of God. We can get caught up in the doing and the not doing, but at the end of the day, it's the grace of God that teaches and trains us to say no to the ungodliness in our lives. When we rely on our own strength, kaya ko naman yan. Wala yan sa akin. Yung sin, sin, sin and temptation, wala yan sa akin. Malakas ako kay Lord. We begin to rely on our own strength, our own ability. But at the end of the day, you begin to realize, hindi mo kaya talaga. It's only by the grace of the Lord. In Titus 2, 11 and 12, it is the grace of God that has appeared that offers salvation to all people. This grace teaches us to say what? To say no. To say no to ungodliness and to worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. Kahit 2022, we can still live an upright and righteous life. Because of what? The grace of God that teaches us to say no to the ungodliness and to the worldly passions. This is a characteristic of those who walk in, his, in the Lord, who keep his testimonies, who follow the instructions of the Lord, who seek him in all their heart. Are we pursuing Christ above all else or are we so focused on not sinning that we miss out on the Lord? At the end of the day, it's his grace that enables us to say no. It's His grace that enables us to live a life according to His Word. Kung babasahin mo yung Bible, lahat to, parang, ang hirap talaga, aminin ko. Ang hirap, ha? If you're not having a hard time, how to be you po? How to, this is hard. This is hard stuff. But thanks be to God, His grace is available to us to live according to what His Word says. In Christ, it is possible to have a righteous life. In Christ, it is possible to have a holy life. In Christ, it is possible to live a pure life. It's because of Him, not because of us. It's never going to be on our own ability to say no to sin and temptation. It's the Word of God that guides us. It's the Word of God that sets the standard. This is how we are to live. Lord, hindi ko kaya, okay lang yan. That's why Jesus came, so that we can live according to His Word. Amen? That's why we need His grace. We need Him in our lives. Verse 10 and 11. The psalmist says, With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Last week I talked about this whole heart before the Lord, a whole heart that seeks after God. We can't have a divided heart 
when it comes to seeking after the Lord, we need to seek Him with our whole heart, with everything that we have. Once our heart, or even a part of our heart, seeks something above God, that's when we begin to, what? Wonder. With my whole heart, I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. My wife and I, when, we, when our kids were still very young, we, we, uh, so before we, we had kids, every week, we date po kami. My Monday would be my, is my day off, and we would take that time just to go out and date. Uh, simple date. And when our kids came along, yung weekly, naging once a year. They joke lang din man once a year. <laughs> Every other month, if it was possible. <laughs> but that became a point of tension sa amin. And, uh, and, and when, when, and actually, I couldn't even find a picture of a date when, during this time. Ito lang yung nakito ko, kasama pa yung mga anak namin, no? Labo. Okay. But, when we were eventually able to get a date, but I think they were about this age. Uh, Vier was what, two? Sandro, Ateo was wala pang one. Eventually, when we were able to find somebody who can take care of them, minsan sila Pastor Larry, Ate Yet yun, okay, leave them in their house, sneak out for a couple of hours just to talk. When my wife and I were there, syempre pag date, is talking, you know, sharing each other's dreams and whatever, you know, talking about one another. We realized when well, our conversation went along, we ended up just talking about the kids. Habi, take lang. You realize we're just talking about the kids over and over again. Oh, I missed him. We, we missed him already, and that, that just came out of our mouths. We, we began to wonder when it was supposed to be just her and I. Diba? Talking about our love, our young love, and all of those things. Kaya lang nagwandered na kami. We're talking about our kids because we miss them. And misa ganon tayo. When we are not wholly devoted, our whole hearts are not before the Lord. When we come to the Lord, ano nangyayare? Our minds begin to wander. Oh nga no? And we begin to think about other things. Our Bible is open right there in front of us. But what happens? We begin to wander. But it's with a whole heart that seeks after Him, that we will not wander. When we begin to wander from the Word of God, that's when we need to have a heart check. Lord, kumusta puso before you? Have I wandered so far that when we read the Word of God, wala na. Wala na pumapasok. Well, there's no conviction. Our heart has maybe become callous because we've wandered so far already. Our heart has always been divided. We need a heart check if we are already wandering or if we begin to wander. Have we placed something in our hearts above God Himself? That's the start of when our hearts become divided. When we place something above God in our hearts, maybe that's in our work, in our business. It's not just in terms of the time, gets koyan, but many times it's also our reaction to things that happen in our businesses, in our work? Is our reaction a reflection of God in our hearts? I a couple of years ago, I think 20, December of 2020, when Charles C., one of our leaders here in Green Hills, the, their warehouse burned down, I think right before the New Year. Wow. As, imagine everyone Welcoming the new year. Yung nangyari sa kanya, hopeful, looking forward to what God has in store next year. Boom, millions gone, just like that. And I remember his reaction. Siyempre, I'm sure, he was devastated, I'm sure. But his reaction was praise, was thanksgiving, was prayer unto the Lord. He looked to him. And that is a picture, reminded of a heart that stores his word, that stores his truth, that stores God himself in his heart. How is our reaction at times? Napormote yung isang kasama mo, ikaw, you were dismissed. What is your reaction towards that? When the promise of God, you read the word of God, Lord, sabi mo sa Bible, I will be blessed. Pero wala pa nangyayari. Promises, the promise didn't come or it's not happening according to what you expect, according to your own timeline. 
Does our heart reflect a God who is still faithful and good? Or do we react and say, Lord, ano ba yan? Bakit sila nababless? Ako wala. Have we placed something in our hearts other than God himself? You see, we're not called to seek his promises with our whole hearts. We're called to seek him. Minsan kasi parang, Lord, ikaw naman to eh. Word mo to eh, di ba? And we are so focused, Lord, ito yung promise mo sa akin. Ito yung word mo sa akin. But it's not the promise that deserves our whole heart. It's him that deserves our whole heart. Actually, the promise can actually divide our hearts. Not saying it's a bad, the promise in itself is good. It's from the Lord. It's his word. It's his promise. He is faithful. But sometimes that in itself can divide our hearts. We're so focused. We're so, Lord, I need this to happen now. Kailangan ng asawa ngayon. Diba, Adrian? No. Come on, Adrian. Just focus on God, bro. <laughs> you know, the psalmist stores up the word in his heart. We see that in verse 11. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Many versions of the Bible, this verse use store or hidden, but another translation uses the word treasure. I like that word, treasure. I have treasured your word in my heart. It speaks of value, it speaks of importance, it speaks of, you know, that the word of God in itself is treasure. It's of value. It's not just the act of putting it in my heart that I value it, but in, in itself, I value it. It's my treasure. That's why I store it. That's why I treasure my heart. That's why I hide it in my heart. You know, one of the most expensive Bibles in the world is the Gutenberg Bible. Uh, I think uh, there are only 180 of these that were ever existed. 180. Only 49 are in existence today. Kaya lang hindi lahat complete. This is the Bible found in the New York Public Library. So, yung iba, medyo hindi siya complete. So, pwede nyo i-check yung mga bahay ng mga Bible sa mga lolo, lola nyo. You know, kasi if you have a complete one like this, that's worth $35 million. Okay? Imagine. And it's on display for people to come and see one of the first Bibles ever printed. So much value. And maybe for some of us, we have maybe not as an expensive Bible as this, but we have mga Bibles in the house, display, naging uh, coffee, ano ba ta? coffee, basta na sa coffee table, okay, para mukhang Christian na tayo. Di ba, naka-display. Alright? But do we open it up and read it? Or do we just store it up there and put it on display in our homes? You see, the Word of God isn't a treasure to be put on display, but a treasure to be stored up in our hearts. All right? It's something to be consumed. It's something to be eaten spiritually. It is our bread. It is what feeds our spirit, our souls. It's what we need to store up in our hearts. So that going back to verse 9, that I may not sin, uh, uh, verse 10, uh, uh, verse 11, that I may not sin against you. We need the word of God in our hearts. And I guess it goes back to this question, how much do we value the word of God? That will determine if we read it or even if we open it up or how much we store into our hearts. How much do we value the word of God? Okay na ako sa Sunday preaching. May word naman yun eh, di ba? We had our church community class earlier. I shared on how to get involved, participation. And one of the things I said there was, your spiritual growth is not my responsibility. Di ba pastor ka? Your spiritual growth is your own personal responsibility. My job is to present to you the truth of the Word of God. This is what the Word of God says. Live it out. It's up to you if you want to live it out or not. And it goes back to this question, how much do you value the Word of God enough to open it up, to apply it, to live it out, to heed, to pay attention to, 
to obey in your daily life. And I love what the psalmist says again in verse 11. I have stored up your word. Hindi yung word na binigay mo sa akin. There's a huge difference. He acknowledged that this word is God's word. It's the Lord's word. Minsan kasi, we take our own interpretation of the word of God and we accept it and we store it up. Pero hindi naman to, yun talaga yung interpretation or yung gusto sabihin ni Lord on that passage. Take for example, this verse, a famous verse, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord, plans to prosper you, not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Diba? Madalas, ano ginagawa natin? We turn this into a personal promise. And we say, we, we, we store it into our hearts and we memorize this. And we declare, Lord, this is your word for me that there may be prosperity in my life. I may have a better life for me. The better a future, the blessed life, the prosperity is yet to come. Kasi nga, diba? I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. And so you have hope in the future. But if you actually look at the context of this and what the Lord is actually trying to say here, sinisabi niya, anak, alam mo, lahat naman, we are going, you're going to experience troubles. You're going to have problems. Actually, if you read this, when Jeremiah was speaking this to the people of God, ayaw nila to. Imagine, eh, lahat tayo, uy, gusto ko yan. Hope, future, prosperity, gusto ko yan. Eh, sila mismo, who this word was given to, they didn't want to hear it. Jeremiah, ayaw ko yan. I don't want to hear it. Why? Because in the context of this, sinasabi ni Jeremiah, you're going to have experience trouble. Who wants trouble? Who wants problems? But what God is saying here, yes, you'll have trouble, but know that I am in control. I am in control, I am faithful, and I will bring you through, and your hope is in me. It's not a promise about prosperity and a great future ahead. Eh, tayo eh. We take something like this and we put our subjective interpretation into it. But when we pay attention and heed it, you would see. Iba talaga yung sinasabi ni Lord. Hello. That's why we need to read the Word of God, pay attention, obey, live it out. Have we stored up the Word of God in our hearts? Are we continually storing up God's Word in our hearts? A question, how do we know if God's word, word is stored up in our hearts? O nga, no? Paano nga? How do we know, how can we tell if God's word has been stored up in our hearts? Baka yung sa atin, lumaki sa Sunday school, sa kids' church, di ba? How, many, how would you know for, true, for real if God's word is stored up in your hearts? If it affects every area of your life. Madili lang sabihin na parang, oh, oh, alam ko na yan. God's word is stored up in my life kasi I go to church. I'm here now. The 2 p.m. service, di ba? But what about in terms of your finances? In terms of relationships? In terms of your marriage? Is the word of the Lord uh, lived out in that relationship? Sa trabaho mo? Nakikita ba yung mga kasama mo na, ah, oh, nga, no, kristyano ka pala? Do they see you living out of love and kindness and goodness. How do we know if God's word is stored up in our hearts? It affects the way we think, or the way we act, the way we speak, the way we relate with people. And it safeguards us from sin. It teaches us, the grace of the Lord teaches us to say no to ungodliness. God's word changes us and molds us. Kung dati kayo mag-asawa, lagi kayo nag-aaway, di ba? To the point of, sige, alis na ako, sige, alis ka! Diba? But because of the word of God, it changed you. Now your conversation between husband and wife is, Honey, I love you. With the love of the Lord. Oh, biblical yan, ha? Magbago. Because the word of God changes us. It molds us to be more like Christ. You see, a heart that seeks God and his, stores his, world, his word will lead us away from sin. You want to say no so to sin? You want to guard yourself from sin? Seek him and his word. Store his word in your heart. The truth of the matter is, sin will always be there. 
Temptations will always be there. Lahat yun nandun. Just go out of this mo- this, these doors. It's there. It's right there. It will always be there. But the challenge today is, what are you going to do about it? And do yung temptation. And do yung deceit of the enemy. Okay lang to. Diba sabi nga ni Serpent kay Eve? Did God really say, mali yan? Okay lang yan. Wala naman sa Bible yan eh. Gray area lang yan. It's okay. Diba? But sin will always be there. And my hope is that we would seek the Lord and His ways. Store up His word. Read His word. Hide it in our hearts. Memorize scripture. So that we can battle against the, the world that we are living in. Psalm 119 verse 12. Psalmist says, Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. I love the humility of the psalmist here. Teach me your statutes. Kung babasahin mo yung buong Psalm 119, you would think, grabe, alam niya yung Bible, no? Alam niya talaga yung word ni Lord. Yet here, he says there, Lord, teach me. He acknowledges, Lord, I don't know everything. And you see here his humility to acknowledge his desire to learn and to follow the instructions of God. You know, if, if, it's, if you're trying out something that you don't know, how many of you know but it's easy to have the willingness to learn? Diba? If it's to learn how to bike, if you don't know how to bike, diba? or to learn how to invest, diba? you just talk to somebody, oh, you're, because you want to invest, uh, the inheritance you received or whatever, diba? Parang, you're so curious, you want to learn, you desire to know. To study, to learn, or if it's about learning the piano, diba? you 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 want to know how to play the piano so you can join our worship team, or uh, what's the last one? Baking, diba? You you you're tired of spending so much money buying from all the IG sellers. Go on, lang sa mong kick, diba? You want to learn? It's easy, diba? There's that willingness, the desire. But what if it's something that you already know? Do you still have the willingness? To unlearn some things so that you can learn again what you have already probably heard about before. Are we willing to learn even though we know a lot about it, know much about it already? The tendency is that you won't be as willing to learn about something that you are very much familiar with, especially when it comes to the Word, word of God. Kung matagal kang Christiano, di ba? Tendency is you hear a young pastor like me, and you hear him preach. Bata pa to, wala siyang alam. Alam ka na yan eh. Mali nga yung sinasabi niya eh. But are we willing to come in humility before the Lord and say, Lord, there's still something that you can teach me. There's, you know, we will never outgrow our need to learn from God's word. We'll never. Alam mo ba, every Christmas, I'll tell you something. Huwag mo sabihin kay Pastor Larry. Alam mo ba, yung mga preaching natin sa Christmas, every year it's the same. <laughs> Did you notice that? You didn't notice? Kasi iba yung packaging namin eh. <laughs> but it's the same message every year. But how many of you guys still get ministered to every year during Christmas? Why? It's the same message about joy, about peace, about hope, about love. But because it's the word of God, it's live, it's active, it's living. When we still hear it, there's something fr- new, something refreshing that we can receive because it's the word of God. And we need to come with the same attitude just like the psalmist. Lord, teach me your statutes. Teach me your ways. Let me learn from your word. There's so much that we can still learn from God's word. Let's not get stuck with yesterday's revelation. But always seek to learn something new from the word of God. That's why our daily reading of the Bible, kung hindi mo kaya every day, okay lang yan. When you can, open up his word. Because there's something new. Because tendency is, and at times I'm guilty of this as well. Oh, yung revelation na nakuha ko last week, I'm still, ano tawag dito? I'm still uh, uh, chewing it. It's still stuck in my mind. 
Okay pa ako. But we can't just rely on yesterday's revelation. We need to continually seek to learn, to know, pursue God. Because there, God is infinite. There's so much of Him that He wants to pour out into our hearts, into our lives, if we're willing to pursue and to follow after, th- after Him. Kaya sa mga victory groups, alam mo, one of the things I love about victory groups is when I speak, I always try to make it, make it about 15, 20 minutes. 15 minutes as, as much as possible. Keep it short, get to the point, go. And I ask the, you know, the, those in the group, Ikaw, what do you think? What are your thoughts? Because there's something that I can learn even myself from the people that I am leading as well. And when they hear, oh nga, no? I like that, I like what you said. Yeah? I didn't see that. There's always something new, something that we can learn from the Word of God, from different perspectives especially, as we have that humility and desire to want to learn from His Word. Last four verses in Psalm 119. With my lips I declare all the rules of your mouth. In the way of your testimonies I delight as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Next week, we're going to talk about more about declaring the word of God, speaking the word of God, as the psalmist says here in verse 13. And there is really power when we speak the word of God. But I don't want to go too much into this. But if you look here in this passage, you see that a psalmist filled his life. Okay? His whole life with the Word of God. Verse 15. Ano ba sinabi niya? I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. He, he was always thinking about the Word of God. He was trying to understand, Lord, ito ba talaga yung gusto mo sabihin sa akin? He was trying to understand, trying to understand the context, how that can relate to him, how that can be applied. He was trying to understand the usefulness, the value of this passage of this Word. He was reflecting on what it means to him today. He was reflecting and trying to see how, how, how to live this out as he was reading the Word of God. He considered the actions that needed to be taken in order to obey, in order to live out the Word of God. Lahat yan, mineditate niya. Think, to understand, to reflect, to consider. Diba? When was the last time we actually meditated on the Word of God? We just stopped, paused, parang reflected, considered. And let me tell you this, there is so much that we can gain from the verses and the scriptures that we read in the Bible. If you're experiencing anxiety or worry, you open up the word of God. 1 Peter 5, 7, what does it say? Or cast your cares unto him, because what? He cares for you. Philippians 4, 6, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, in prayer and petition, in thanksgiving, offer up your request unto the Lord. Word of God speaks to every area of our lives. If you are overwhelmed, sinasabi mo, Lord, ang bigat itong week na to, sa traba, sa family, Lord, parang lahat na lang. Kayo ka na, Lord. You're overwhelmed. Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28, what does it say there? Come to me, all who are weary and burdened. And the Lord says, I will give you what? I will give you rest. That's the word of God. What if, you, if you're uh, having a hard time in terms of forgiveness? Lord, Ephesians 4.32, what does it say? Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgive each other. Just as in Christ, God forgave you. Wow, grabe naman, Lord. Sakit. Convict ako dun ah. Amen? Love your neighbor. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 4. What does it say there about love? We're not supposed to love as the world loves. Because love is what? It's patient. It's kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It's not rude. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil but rejoices in the truth. Love always protects, always hopes, always trusts, always perseveres. That's love. 
Are we opening up the word of God, meditating on it, reflecting, considering, okay, how can I live this out in my life today? Sa trabaho, sa relationships, because in my marriage, as I parent my children, how can I, how can I, I apply the word of God in our lives? And I believe that how many of you, last two, three years, this pandemic, how many of you, the word of God was a big help. It got you through. Oh, it got me through this pandemic. Right? And it's not just cliche sayings, but because the word of God is alive, it's active, it speaks to our now situation. It can help us even as the world is going, goes through a pandemic. That's how powerful the word of God is. Meditate on God's word and allow it to speak life into you, to encourage you, to uplift you, to bless you. That's what the word of God does. The psalmist also said, I will delight in your statutes. Hindi lang inisip niya. But he delighted, he enjoyed the word of God. He loved the word of God. But he delighted in obeying the word of God. Lord, kahit mahirap, Lord, sige, gagawin ko. Because I love you. It started within. He was motivated to do right by God. Not just to follow a set of do's and don'ts. And that love that he has for the word of God was fueled by God's love for him. The reason why we can obey and have the motivation to want to do what is right by God is because of God who first loved us. In John 14 verse 15, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. If we love God, it's seen in our obedience to Him. And even the love that we have for the Lord, hindi lang galing sa atin lang. Galing kay Lord yan. It's because of His love, who, He who first loved us, that we are able to love Him back and to obey His commandments. Are we delighting in the Word of God? Do we love the Word of God? Are we motivated to obey what His Word says in our lives? As we obey, I hope you understand that our obedience should be rooted in our love for Him. And lastly, He says there, not only did He meditate, delight, but He said, I will not forget your words. And that speaks of the habits that this psalmist had of reading, of memorizing scriptures. Are we praying the scriptures? You know, you can pray the Word of God. Lord, help me to love, as it says there in 1 Corinthians 30, to be patient, to be kind, to keep no records of wrongs. You can actually also sing the word. Do you know that? Yung mga songs natin. It's from verses, from passages in scripture. We're singing, we're declaring the word of God. You can also put them in your homes. Pwede mo ilagay sa fridge mo, picture frame, so that it's always top of mind. So that you will not, we will not forget the word. For not forget the word of God. Earlier this, uh, this week, or a couple of days ago, the whole world uh, was mourning the death of Queen Elizabeth. Diba? And uh, a woman of faith, in the 2019 uh, Christmas message she had for uh, the nation for, for the UK and all the other nations. This was the ending of her speech. And I, 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 what I, I love what she says. Sabi niya, it's worth remembering that it is often the small steps, not the giant leaps, that bring about the most lasting change. It's not those big giant leaps, oh, if I do this, magbago yung buhay ko. If I bring this person to Victory Weekend, okay na yung buhay ko. But it's the small steps. It's the time that you open up your Bible. The small steps of turning the pages, reading it. Small steps of meditating. Small steps of memorizing scripture. Small steps of praying and coming before the Lord. Lord, I seek you, I pursue you, I love you. Small steps of just taking the time to be with the Lord. Memorize and meditate, reflect, obey. And when we do these small steps, it will bring about lasting change in our lives. A change for the better. A change to become the, become the man and the woman that the Lord has called us to be. Amen? 
You know what? As I end, Psalm 119 is actually divided into 22 sections or stanzas. Lahat yun, eight verses each. And each section of Psalm 119 begins with a Hebrew uh, letter. Okay? Uh, each, each section represents one Hebrew letter. Itong verse 9 to 16 you know, you actually check in your Bibles, the letter or the uh, Hebrew letter that this represents is the word Beth. Beth. Okay? Which means house. Okay? Which means house. Kaya, yung Bethel, you know, which means house of God or Bethlehem, house of bread, where the bread of life was born. Okay? Yung Beth, it means house. And some scholars say that this passage or, or, or this section speaks about making our hearts a house or a home for the word of God. Okay, the, the, the verse 11, storing up, housing the word of God in our hearts. Okay? And my hope for all of us is to understand or, or to ask this question, have we made our hearts a house for the word of God? Have we stored up his word, his truth in our hearts that it affects every area of our lives? You see, to live according to God's word requires that we bring him and his word into our hearts. I know that sounds very, uh, actually just as I was saying it, it sounds very cliche, but that's the truth of the matter. Bringing God himself into our hearts and his truth, his word, into our hearts. Because as we do that, it will be seen, it will be manifested, it will be reflected in our daily living. Amen. And I invite everyone to stand to their feet as we end, as we pray. Lord, we thank you, Father God, for your word. Thank you, Lord God, for how you desire for us to pursue you, to come after you. Lord, we thank you for giving us the Bible, giving us your very word that allows us, that guides us, that teaches us how we are to live according to your truth, according to your ways. Lord, thank you that it's not just a bunch of nice stories, but Lord, it's a truth that allows us to be transformed, a truth that allows us to be changed, to be more like your son. We thank you, Lord God, that it's not even gonna be our, by our own ability, by our own strength, Lord God, that we can live a life of purity, that we can live a life that will honor you, Lord. We thank you that it's going to be by your grace as we live out your truth, obey your word. With every head bowed and eyes closed, I just sense maybe for some of us, that maybe we have wandered off. Maybe for some of us, we, we feel that somehow, as you read the word of God, words the Lord, but it doesn't fall down to your heart. It enters your brain, oh, it gets koyan. I understand it, but somehow it doesn't drop to your heart. And maybe there are things that hinder you. Maybe there are, I don't know. I just feel that there's some things that are keeping us from really having that passion, that desire, that love for the Word of God. Yes, I know you love God. But I just said, I, can, I, I can't really identify, but maybe you yourself, you feel it yourself. The parang, Lord, me something eh. Di ko lang ko ano yun, pero it's, it's preventing me, it's keeping me up. But I just sense the Lord wants to take it away. Whatever that may be. Maybe doubt, maybe thoughts, maybe experiences in the past that felt na parang, why should I believe now? Why should I obey now? Why should I follow now? But the Lord is saying, hey, I am still the same God of yesterday. Same God today who can bring about change and transformation in your life. You can bring about renewal and refreshing in your life.
He can bring about His purposes and His glory in your life. And I believe it starts with just coming before Him in humility and saying, Lord, I need you to work in my heart, to work. Lord, as much as I would want to store up in your, your word in my heart, Lord, there's something there that needs to be taken away. And with every head bowed and eyes closed, if you feel that that's you, that the world Lord is doing something in your heart right now, just kindly lift up your hand and put it down so that I know who I'm praying for. Thank you. Thank you for the hand. Thank you. Thank you for the hand. Thank you for the hand. Lord, you've seen the humility of these people, Lord God, that to acknowledge, Lord God, Lord, me something. Tanggalimo, Lord. As much as I want to do it by my own strength, Lord, hindi ko kaya. I thank you that you are there to enable me, to empower me, to live a life that would please you, that would honor you, to follow and obey your word. Lord, Lord I thank you that even right now, I thank you, Lord God, that you are doing a spiritual surgical a spiritual surgery Lord God of removing things in our hearts that should not be there things that are taking place things that we have put above you Lord God and Lord I thank you Lord God that you would fill up what has been removed what you are taking away with your word with your truth with your love with faith Lord God to trust to obey to live out so Lord we thank you Father God Lord we declare that you are good in Jesus name I just worship the Lord right now. Let me just end by reading Psalm 119, 9 to 16 once again. How can a young man keep his way pure? 
by guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare all the rules of your mouth. In the way of testimonies I delight as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Yes, Lord, I, I just declare even today, Lord God, that this would be true for each and every one of us, Lord God, that we will meditate on your word, that we will delight in your truth, that we will not forget your teachings, Lord God. Father, I pray for each and every one of us, Lord God, even right now, I pray that you would begin to rekindle, renew a passion for your word, for your truth, Lord God. Father, I pray that you would stir up our hearts once again to see your word in a new light, Lord God. I pray for a refreshing perspective, Lord God, even the same passage, the same verse that we have read over and over again, Lord God. Lord, I know, Lord, there's a fresh revelation that would speak to our now situation, Lord God. And I thank you, Father, that may your word, Lord God, may your truth, Lord God, permeate our hearts and allow us to live out your truth each and every day of our lives. Father, even right now, I pray that we would be a people that would store up your word, your truth in our hearts, Lord God, that would lead us not just away from sin, but would lead us to you, to pursue you, to love you, to follow after you. Lord, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be upon each and every one of us as we leave this place. May we be a walking Bible to those around us, reflecting your truth and love and the, the, our, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ to those around us. I speak a blessing upon everyone here today. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you all. See you next week. Oh, hi guys! Welcome to our Victory Greenhouse YouTube channel. Now, if you are here, we hope that today's message will bless you, it'll encourage you, it'll speak life to you. But more than the message itself, we would like to encourage you to be part of our church community. And you can get connected through discipleship. And we want to invite you to be part of one of our Victory groups. If you're interested, please do let us know. You can comment, you can message us, you can text us. Whatever, just let us know how you want to get connected so that we can plug you in. God bless you.